Hey guys, today's video lecture topic is how organisms obtain energy. Please make sure you're filling in your notes organizer as I go through the PowerPoint. As usual, if you need to, uh, pause or replay at any time. Okay, so all organisms require energy to live. And we're going to talk about why that is in just a second, but first I want to reintroduce these terms, autotrophs and heterotrophs. We know that autotrophs are able to make their own food by converting energy. There are two types of autotrophs. There are chemoautotrophs and there are photoautotrophs. Chemoautotrophs are the ones we're a little less familiar with, and that's using chemicals as a source of energy in order to make their own food through the process of chemosynthesis. And then photoautotrophs are the ones we always talk about because they use photosynthesis, which uses sunlight as a source of energy in order to make their own food. And then heterotrophs, that would be like us, we have to consume food and then break it down in order to obtain our energy. So why do organisms need energy? So many of our cellular processes require energy. The assembling of molecules, the breaking down of molecules, uh, transporting substances across membrane, transmitting genetic instructions, all of those things require energy. So those chemical reactions that are taking place within a cell is called the cell's metabolism. So you've heard metabolism in terms of digestion. That's talking about the reactions um, that are used to digest your food. So someone with a high metabolism has you know, more reactions reactions taking place. But the, germ, the term metabolism simply refers to the chemical reactions that are taking place within a cell. Okay, so we're going to talk about two major processes today. We're going to talk about photosynthesis and we're going to talk about cellular respiration. So let's start with photosynthesis, which we just discussed is utilized by photoautotrophs. The big picture of photosynthesis is that the energy from the sun is going to be used to make food or glucose for the plant. So we're converting solar or light energy into chemical energy. So on number five, use the picture of the tree and use this little picture here to help you to show you what is coming in and what is going out during the process of photosynthesis. You may need to pause on this picture, but the big picture idea, the key idea that I want you to take away is that the purpose of photosynthesis is to take energy from the sun and use it to make food glucose for the plant. The purpose is not to produce oxygen. We're thankful that plants produce oxygen, but but that is not the purpose of photosynthesis. Okay, so what is that? What is coming in during photosynthesis? This should be pretty familiar to you. But coming in is carbon dioxide. We know that because that's what we give off to plants, right? Carbon dioxide, water, that makes sense. You have to water your plants in order for them to live. And then the energy from the sun. What is going out is going to be glucose. That's the whole point. And then that byproduct of the, the gas oxygen being released. So therefore, the balanced chemical equation is this. And write this down um, under number six. Six carbon dioxide plus six water uh, yields, and sometimes you'll see it written with the light energy above the arrow, sometimes you'll see it on the left side of the arrow, but yield C6H12O6, which is glucose, plus 6O2, which is oxygen. Photosynthesis takes place in the chloroplast and eukaryotic cells. So chloroplasts are found mostly in the cells of leaves, which makes sense when you think about it because leaves are designed for trapping light, right? They have these big broad leaves that are made for capturing sunlight. So that's where you're going to find most of the chloroplasts. So you've got all these, you see plant cells within the leaves and within each of those plant cells, you've got tons of chloroplasts. Okay, here's the structure of a chloroplast. Um, you're going to need to probably pause on this and draw this under number 10 on your notes organizer. So the parts of the chloroplast are the outer membrane, the inner membrane, the chlorophyll, which is the pigment that you're going to find inside of the, th the thylakoid, and then the stroma. So let's start by talking about the, th the thylakoids. These are basically these flattened, like disc-like membranes that are full of that pigment chlorophyll. This is what gives the chloroplast its green color. This is where the light-dependent reactions take place. Now, light-dependent depends on light. Okay, so this is where the light starts bouncing around within the chloroplast. Um, you have a stacks of thylakoids within the chloroplast. A single stack is called a granum, and then multiple granum would be grana. 
Okay, and then outside of the thylakoids, you have what I sort of call like the cytoplasm of the chloroplast. That's the stroma. Okay, so this is the fluid's filled space outside of the grana, and this is where the light independent reactions take place. That there is, does not need to be light for this part of the, re the reaction of photosynthesis to take place. So it does not require light. That is the major difference between light independent and light dependent. The light dependent reactions require light. The light independent reactions do not require light. Okay, so I've talked a lot about this pigment uh, chlorophyll. The pigments in plants are those light-trapping molecules, and this is what leads to the color of the plant. Ultimately, it's what's not being absorbed by the blood plant and what's being reflected that gives it its color. So chlorophyll is the pigment we're most familiar with because that's the pigment that gives it the green color, when in reality, that leaf that's putting off a green color to us is actually absorbing every other color but green. It's reflecting green. That's what we see because it's bouncing back into our eyes. So the chlorophyll is the green pigment found in the chloroplast that traps the light molecules. So chlorophyll is the pigment we're most familiar with, but there are actually tons of pigments within uh, a single plant. So as your temperatures start to cool, those deciduous plants, the ones that lose their leaves, get these signals to start breaking down that green chlorophyll. And as the chlorophyll is breaking down, you're actually seeing the other pigments that are inside of the tree that are just sort of being covered up by the green chlorophyll. So this reveals the colors of the other pigments. So you can see here in this leaf, as that chlorophyll is starting to break down, you're seeing the other color pigments. Okay, so that is photosynthesis. Now we're going to move on to cellular respiration, which is essentially the opposite of photosynthesis. Everything that's being produced in photosynthesis is being taken in in cellular respiration. And then what cellular respiration is producing is being taken in by photosynthesis. So remember, the big picture purpose of photosynthesis was to use energy to make food, glucose. So if, this is, if cellular respiration is the opposite process, then the big picture purpose of cellular respiration is to to break down food, glucose, in order to produce energy in the form of ATP. So photosynthesis was taking energy and using it to make food. Cellular respiration is taking food and breaking it down in order to make energy. That is the purpose of cellular respiration. So what's coming in? Remember, this is the opposite of photosynthesis. It's what's going out in photosynthesis. So what's coming in in cellular respiration is glucose and oxygen. And what's going out in cellular respiration is water, carbon dioxide, and then energy in the form of ATP. Um, use number 17, that little diagram of the mitochondria, to label what's going in and what is coming out during the process of cellular respiration. And then write down your balanced chemical equation for cellular respiration, which is, again, essentially the opposite of photosynthesis. So glucose coming in oxygen coming in, uh, the products are going to be carbon dioxide, water, and then energy in the form of ATP. And we'll talk more about that ATP molecule, but it's basically this high energy containing molecule. That's what's being produced as energy in the process of cellular respiration. Okay, so cellular respiration consists of sort of this introductory process called glycolysis, and then the rest of it makes up the rest of cellular respiration. So glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm, but the majority of cellular respiration takes place in the mitochondria. That makes sense because the purpose of cellular respiration is to produce energy, and we all know that the mighty mitochondria is the energy producing powerhouse of the cell. So here's your structure of the mitochondria, and you may need to pause on this to draw your picture and label the, the parts here. But we have two membranes um, in the mitochondria. There's the outer membrane, and then there's the inner folded membrane. And that folded membrane is so incredibly important because it increases the surface area of the mitochondria. And that's going to be where the majority of your ATP is going to be produced. So the more surface area you have, the more energy you can produce. Um, so each of those folds is called a cristae, and then within that, the cristae or cristae or however you want to say it, um, is the matrix, which is basically like the cytoplasm of the mitochondria. Okay, so label that on your diagram. So after glycolysis, the rest of cellular respiration is what we call aerobic. And aerobic means it requires the presence of oxygen. Okay, think about like 
the you know aerobics from like the 1980s that was like the super popular workout style um, they're taking in lots of oxygen while they're doing their exercising okay so the majority of cellular respiration is what we call aerobic it's an overall aerobic process this produces a great deal of ATP a good deal of energy lots of energy but sometimes oxygen is unavailable for example um, let's say you're a cross-country runner and you've been running for a super long time and you've depleted the oxygen in your muscles there has to be a way for you to continue producing um, ATP or energy for just a short amount of time. <coughs> Excuse me, so if oxygen is unavailable, glycolysis is going to take place, and then you're going to have anaerobic respiration take place. And, and anaerobic respiration is also called fermentation. So if oxygen is unavailable, you're going to have fermentation follow glycolysis instead of the rest of cellular respiration. So what's the problem with this? Well, anaerobic respiration is really only a short-term solution because it produces very little ATP when you compare it to aerobic cellular respiration. Okay, so there are two types of fermentation. There's lactic acid fermentation, which, as it sounds like, produces lactic acid. And then there's alcohol fermentation, which, just like it sounds like, produces, produces ethanol or ethyl alcohol. Okay, um, if you've ever been working out and your muscles have gotten really sore and they've started to burn, that means that you have depleted the oxygen within your muscles, which means cellular respiration isn't going to take place anymore and fermentation is going to start taking place. And you're actually producing lactic acid fermentation and that lactic acid is what creates the burning feeling within your muscles as you're working out. Um, lactic acid is also what's used in making a lot of foods like cheese, yogurt, and sour cream. And then alcohol fermentation is mostly done by yeast, but there are some bacteria as well that can, that can produce this, this um, alcohol fermentation. Okay, so you have the glucose that's broken down in glycolysis, and if oxygen is unavailable, you go into fermentation. If oxygen is available, then you go into cellular respiration, the rest of that process that produces lots of energy. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the connections between photosynthesis and cell Remember, these are basically opposite processes. So the purpose of photosynthesis was to use energy to make food, glucose. The purpose of cell respiration is to break down food, glucose, and use it to make energy. So the products of one reaction are the reactants of the other. That's what it means to say that they are opposite processes. What's being produced in one is being used in the other. Keep in mind, this is something that students get mixed up with every single year. Photosynthesis takes place in the chloroplast, which is found in plants. Cell respiration takes place in mitochondria. Both plants and animals have mitochondria. So don't think like, oh, one is for plants and one is for animals, because that's not necessarily the case. You can have photosynthesis and cellular respiration taking, in, taking place inside of one single plant cell at the same time. Okay, now in your diagram, um, please make sure you fill in all of the parts here, including the organelles, the process name, the balanced equation, and then the materials that are being produced and being used here. Okay, so we've got photosynthesis taking place in the chloroplast. There's our balanced equation. The, photo, the chloroplast in photosynthesis is producing glucose and oxygen, which is being taken in by the mitochondria during cellular respiration. There's your balanced equation. And then what's being produced by the mitochondria is the ATP, of course, that's the whole point. And then what's going to be used for photosynthesis is going to be the carbon dioxide and the water. And that's taken in for photosynthesis, and then the cycle continues. Now remember, this can be taking place within one single plant cell, or it could be taking place between a plant and an animal, and what they're releasing we can be using but I don't want you to get confused and think that one is a plant one is an animal because it could be happening inside of one single cell so pause on that picture if you need to continue writing here's another picture you could pause on to show you sort of the connections between photosynthesis and cellular respiration just another way of illustrating that you're gonna do a poster project um, that's going to illustrate these things and then finally, what I want you to do is in paragraph form, I want you to use words to summarize the connections between photosynthesis and cellular respiration. And otherwise, in other words, summarize what is happening in this picture here. Use your words, use complete sentences to describe the connection between photosynthesis and cell respiration. Sounds like a pretty good essay question for a test, if you ask me. Hint, hint. 
All right, I hope you're having a good day. Please make sure you have your notes organizer ready um, so that it can be checked and that you can take your little note check.